back, JR Production presents the third annual Choir Fest featuring Deborah Barnes, Unified Praise, Total Praise Number no. 2, Vanessa Rory, The Cleanup Boys and New Zion, Vivian Moore and Youthful Worship, Smithfield Adult Choir, House of Deliverance Praise Team. It all takes place on Sunday, February the 4th at the Marlboro Civic Center, 106 Clyde Street in Bennisville. Tickets on sale now. Advanced tickets are $10, at the door $15, children 6 to 12, $5. Doors open at 3, show times at 4. On Sunday, February the 4th. Ticket info, James McDuffie at 843-862-1444. Or stop by Praise and Faith in Chiral, 843-537-6591. Or Gospel Music Store in Laurenburg, 910-276-0918. It's the third annual Choir Fest. Presented by JR Production. Sunday, February the 4th at the Marlboro Civic Center, 106 Clyde Street in Bennettsville. Get your tickets now because you don't want to miss the third annual choir fest. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Who's Who Blog Talk Radio interviews right here on UGA Gospel Storm Indie Station. All right, y'all, so today I got a special guest with me. She's just a wonderful gospel sweetheart. And I'm going to read you a little bit of her bio because it's just so interesting. And I didn't want to forget anything. Okay, so the music ministry of Terry McConnell will certainly encourage your heart and lift your spirit. With a joy-felt message of God's love for all, she is an inspiring and gifted songstress whose warm smile expresses her dedication and determination to spreading the gospel to the world. With two European world tours, including Italy and Switzerland, Terry is no stranger at all to the gospel music industry and is a native of Okamoji, Oklahoma, born to Elf. Of women, Ellsworth and Carrie Biglow Lewis. She is married to a devoted man of God, Reverend Roy McConnell, and they have five children. Her professional background had been nursing. However, she is now blessed with a dynamic music ministry and is a national, international recording artist. So, with no further ado, I'm going to inter- um, welcome her to Who's Who Blog Talk Radio interviews. Hello, Mrs. McConnell. Hello, how are you? I was sitting here wondering, who is she talking about? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you've done so much in the music industry. And when I read it, my heart just started melting. I was like, I could just, like, see it all. I could see it all. So So how are you doing today? Oh, I'm wonderful, having uh, a wonderful time of my life. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm trying to get over the flu, but even with that, I'm still saying I am so blessed because God Amen. has left me here a little bit longer. Some didn't make it, and I feel for the families and the people that have gone through this because it is no easy task to deal with the flu. That flu doesn't like anyone. Oh, no, and, you know, I did a report on it last night on another show, and it is worldwide. It's everywhere, and they're, they're saying that this is the worst that it's been since 2009, and it is really taking a lot of lives. So you it have to be really it has. with that. Yeah. All right. Yes. So we're still praying for your healing. So tell us a little bit about how you got started. No, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know I read that, but... How do you feel about yourself? <laughs> oh, a little bit more about myself that was not on that bio. I am just a, a real down-to-earth country girl that loves to be a homemaker. I love sewing and cooking and gardening. and I just, I just love all of my my little fun stuff that I do, you know, I I don't have anything that I can say. Oh, you know, I fly airplanes on the uh, on my my time off just for fun, or I skydive. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. I like playing in the dirt with my flowers and growing my vegetables, and then I come in the house and I love decorating. And when I'm not doing that, I'm I'm singing. And that's who I am. <laughs> Oh, that's a beautiful thing to play in the dirt because I'm in the country and I love playing in the dirt. I come off in a big form, so I love it too. I love it. So tell yeah. us a little bit how did you get started in gospel music. Uh, gospel has always been 
part of my life. Um, that's all I know is gospel. Uh, my dad was a gospel singer, and and he still would be a gospel singer if age hadn't caught up with him. But he's getting ready to celebrate his 93rd birthday, so singing is not one of the things that he do a, a whole lot of other than around the house anymore. So I grew up um, hanging on my dad's leg while he was up singing. He was the lead singer of a quartet group, the Oklahoma Spirituals. And um, so I learned how to, first of all, get over stage fright from just standing up in front of people alongside Dad. We were raised in church, uh, so I've always been either in the uh, Tiny Tots Choir, the Junior Choir, then on to the Adult Choir, and then up to where I'm at now. So church has always been in me, around me, and part of me, and will always be who I am. Uh, so that's how I got started. Um, I love singing. I love when I'm given the message through whatever the melody is, I love being able to see that those lyrics are helping uh, ease pain and giving people encouragement, helping them to go through whatever it is they're dealing with, just giving them hope. So singing is just all I know. That's all I know. Um, my mom, she sang some, but not uh, on the level with my dad. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's my whole family is just a, come from a whole lineage of singers. Um, just church, church singers, your everyday singers. Wow! So happy birthday to your dad, and we're praying many more ah. years to come for him. <laughs> That's a Thank blessing, so right there. Yeah, you know, in the nineties. Oh my God, we could just highlight yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. he's getting. I'm getting ready to turn 93, so what a blessing. 93 years old, wow. Yeah. So um, yeah. you said, you mentioned about the quartet, about how you was raised up in quartet, and I see where you had started your own singing group. Um, yes. Well, we started, yeah, well, actually the group that. was my sisters. Um, it was my sisters mm-hmm. and I. We all sang together um, up until I, I decided to um, take a different route in the industry. Uh, so it's always been a part of, of a group, up, like I said, up until these latter years, which is just I decided to go solo after that. Everyone, you know, they have families and they move away and children, and so it's hard to keep a group together. And so I decided uh-huh. to just continue on singing because I loved it so much, and I felt, I said, this has got to be what God is wanting me to do because I feel so good when I'm standing up and knowing that I'm trying to give someone else an encouraging word and it just feels right for me to stand up and try my best to help God's people. So I said, Lord, as long as you give me the strength and the energy to do this, I'm going to be found moving my feet in the direction that you take me. And so that's what I'm still doing. Uh, But we started out as a sister group. Wow. That's awesome right there. And I hope that some of the quartet artists are listening to this because um, we see so many times that um, the groups are trying to keep each other together, but sometimes, you know, other ones just outgrow it, you know, and it may not be for them. But the one who does really want to keep doing it, they need to go on and do their own solo thing. And, you know, it'll be just like you. I mean, you are well accomplished in that area, and you are definitely an example to those of us who are are in groups, you know, that we're trying to hold together. That might not be what God wants, you know? Right, wow. right. Just always make sure you pray and ask God what is his will, and just follow what he leads you to do. Not what you always want to do on your own, but make sure it's God's leading, and you can never go wrong as long as you follow him. All right. So at the age of 12, you asked your parents for a piano. How did you end <laughs> up, um, <laughs> you know, I had to go Because, you know, it's a lot of people out here be trying to play. And, you know, it's just, it's all in your mind, determination, faith, and hope. So tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> oh, I tell you, that was the funniest thing, because I get tickled when I think about it myself now. But the piano that I, I asked for, a piano, and they couldn't afford it at the time. And so they bought one of those uh, little toy pianos that it only had, I don't know, 20-something keys on it. It, 
you could just barely sit up to it. It was so tiny. But uh, it was more of a toy than anything. But anyway, I started learning how to play with one finger. I picked out Jesus, keep me near the cross with one finger. And then I, I went to two fingers. And I was trying to learn how to blend and, and, and all of that stuff. So then I got the three fingers and just kept on and kept on till I finally got a full hand on the piano keys. And I thought I was on my way by then, you know. I was ready to be uh-huh. the music director. With, like, I could play with five fingers. <laughs> I really thought I had it going on. (laughs) Needless to say, I still play, but my problem is I never graduated to uh, for this new sound. I I don't blend the way the new the music has changed. I got caught up in that time zone, and so I still play. uh, You know when I have to, but I don't play that often anymore. But that's how I started out playing. Jesus keep me near the cross on a little toy piano, and then finally uh, graduated to a full size piano. My parents finally got one, and uh, like I said, I played for the church for a long time. Um, but I thank God He's taken me a different direction now. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, girl. <laughs> Because I'm telling you, that, that, was, that, that plan that I was doing just wasn't going to make it today. <laughs> that's why I'm laughing because I was sitting here thinking about myself. You know, I got stuck on playing with the three fingers. Yeah, and, and I'm telling said, you. Why you. Somebody said, I'm why do you keep you. doing that? <laughs> <laughs> so Somebody said, do we, God a favor and let it go. <laughs> <laughs> you are so right. We wouldn't make it today. Conferences, workshops, musicals, revivals, Bobby Jones Gospel TV show, Sing Sensations, oh, yeah. um, the Word Network, and different yeah. church services locally and internationally. So, how has that felt for you um, to get on so many different platforms? Sometimes I still have to stop and really almost pinch myself because it's almost like, well, I still don't believe it. You know, okay, I. I know it happened, but it just still don't seem real sometimes to me. But I thank God that he did allow me to be on those stages, and he's still opening doors. And so, you know, I just take one day at a time, one event at a time, one blessing at a time, and just walk through the door as God opens them up. And I turn around and look and say, look what God did. Like Sister Evelyn Turnting, God did it. God did it. Yes. And how did you come about the two European world tours? Well, actually, my music was uh, was actually sent overseas. Um, and I don't know how the promoters actually got a hold of everything, but through another young man by the name of Earl Bynum, uh, I was able to um, get booked for two European European tours. Uh, but my music was already sent overseas for airplay. But through uh-huh. Earl Bynum, uh, God used him to open that door up to get me over there. That's awesome. And did they receive you well, or was they already oh, familiar with the they, music? There? They were so, so nice and so warm, so kind. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I got off the plane, they were standing there with big signs, welcome, Terry McConnell, and just uh-huh. they just love on you just. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, I don't want to go back home. Not yet. Eventually, but not yet. But uh, yeah. I'm telling you, they were so wonderful. It was just a beautiful, beautiful tour and experience. Okay. So I know you got a new single out, and it's called Thank You, Lord. And we're going to get on that in just a minute. I want you mm-hmm. to tell us a little bit about um, the uh, ministry that you birthed, the Oklahoma Summer Gospel Fest. Mhm, mhm. Uh, it's a platform that uh, God allowed me to set for people in this area uh, that would not have the opportunity to actually be heard um, if someone didn't bring the industry to them, because uh, and bring the knowledge and a lot of the wisdom, some of the experts. I bring them uh, into our state, and it's a conference, a three-day conference that we hold. 